Tonight was the night of my best friend's sleepover. Despite being a close-knit trio, this was the first time I'd actually ever been to her house. My mother dropped me off around 10 p.m. before speeding away to her next appointment. From the outside, the house looked bigger than I had expected. The rusty tall gate spread open upon my arrival, welcoming me deeper inside. If I'm being honest, I've always been afraid of the dark. As I walked up the long and twisty driveway, I spotted a silhouette watching me from the downstairs window. I waved back at them, thinking my friends were expecting me any minute. However, the figure did not wave back, only stepping out of view. When I made it to the front door, it creaked open almost immediately. Standing in front of me was my best friend, Alois. We exchanged hellos before she took my bag, then led me to her room. On our way upstairs, I asked her where her parents were. A silence fell upon us. Then she explained that they'd gone out of town and wouldn't be back until tomorrow. In the midst of our conversation, we finally stopped at a door. Alois swung open the door to reveal her bedroom. Sitting on the bed was our other friend, Amelia, waiting for us. We all laughed while talking about stories, making jokes about people we hated, and ate a ridiculous amount of junk food. Long after everyone had fallen asleep, I found myself still awake. All of that soda left me with the urge to use the restroom. Alois was deep asleep, but I figured I could find a restroom without her help. So I left the room and ventured down that dark hallway. The moonlight flooded in through the large windows. It was beautiful, but I couldn't help but feel like something was watching me from beyond those woods. I continued down the hallway, humming a tune to myself before I paused. It should have been completely silent in that house, yet it wasn't. In the distance, I could faintly hear something calling for me. Come down. Come down. Come down. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. I stumbled into the closest room, which fortunately happened to be a restroom. My hands could not close the door fast enough, rushing to lock it behind me. Someone else was in this house, but Alois's parents were gone, and I knew she had no other siblings. I hurried up and finished my business, making sure to wash my hands afterwards. It felt good not to be in that dark hallway anymore, even though I knew I would have to face it eventually. Looking at my reflection, I realized how tense I was. I splashed some water on my face. It was getting late. I had probably imagined the whispering. There was nothing to be afraid of. With my hands still shaking, I stepped out of the restroom. The faint whispers continued on from downstairs. Come down. Come down. Come down. I tried my best to ignore it and headed back in the direction towards Alois's bedroom. I kept walking down that dark hallway, but it never seemed to end. Finally, there was something in the distance. It was stairs, leading deeper down into the abyss. That's when I realized how silent it had gotten. Then, it slowly began again. Come down. Come down. Come down. The light from the moon had slowly faded away and I was surrounded by darkness. It was suffocating me. So, I went downstairs and followed the sound of the voice. It started to become less and less distant the more I ventured into the unknown. Finally, I found myself in front of two double doors. At first, I was hesitant to open them. It was wrong for me to wander across Alois's house without her permission. Yet, it was even worse to imagine what lied beyond those doors. So, I opened the door slightly 
just enough to peek inside. A quick peek, then I would be gone. It was a reassuring thought. My eyes scanned across the room and spotted two figures resting underneath the covers. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. This time, I knew the taunting was coming directly from the bed. I inched closer, trying to see what was beneath the thin layer of blanket. They remained frozen, so I reached out and yanked the covers off of them. Underneath the blanket were the bloody bodies of two adults. I stood there in shock until I realized who the corpses were originally. These were Lois's parents. I stumbled out of the master bedroom, feeling the darkness of the empty hallways engulf me once more. That's when I heard a chilling voice coming from behind me. What are you doing downstairs, silly? I froze in place. It was Alois. She knew what I had seen beyond those double doors. My body turned to face her. A smile plastered on her face. She was going to kill me next. Amelia followed closely behind her, pretending to rub the sleepiness out of her eyes. What are we doing down here? She yawned. My eyes switched between the two of them. Had they plotted this all along? To lure me into a false sense of security, only to take my life as I slept. The sleepover had been a trap since the beginning. I smiled at my two friends, reassuring them I had just wanted to grab a glass of milk to help me sleep. I invited them to join me, which they accepted with open arms. And Lois led us to the kitchen and took out three glasses while I grabbed the milk and something else from the cabinet. We all cheered together before taking a long gulp from each of our cups. That night, they slept, only to never wake up again. That morning, I went back into the master bedroom to pay my respects to Alois's parents. Before I realized, the room was empty. The bloody figures from last night were replaced with pillows with red covers on them. That's when I heard a car pull into the driveway. Alois, we're home. Her parents were never actually dead. The darkness had been playing tricks in my mind all along. Thank you for watching. This video was inspired by the time I slept at my friend's house. I left her room to go to the restroom in the middle of the night and thought I heard someone whispering for me to come downstairs. In that moment, I regretted making scary stories so bad because all I could think about was someone at the bottom of the stairs wanting to murder me. It turns out, it was actually her fish tank making weird noises. But that's not scary. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this story. Make sure to like and subscribe. So goodbye for now, but not forever.